Awesome. All righty. Um, it is uh, nine uh, fifteen ish. So uh, let's get started. Thank you guys uh, all for joining us um, for our talk on Drupal seven and Drupal eight and life. My name is Michael Myers. I've been working with Drupal for a little over 16 years now. Uh, I founded the first uh, venture-backed Drupal-based startup company, uh, was CTO of the first uh, top 50 uh, Drupal website. And uh, I've spent a lot of time over the years trying to get companies, uh, enterprises to work together, uh, collaborate, and um, fund uh, Drupal and other open source development. I'm joined today by uh, Jeremy Andrews, who's been working with Drupal for uh, 19 years now, since the very beginning of Drupal. And he's one of the very few people that have contributed to uh, Drupal core for every uh, major version of the platform. Outside of Drupal, he is the uh, author and maintainer of Goose, which is the most scalable load testing framework available in Rust, and of course, it's open source. Uh, and his background is in uh, Unix kernel hacking uh, and firewall development. For those of you guys who aren't familiar with Tag1, we work with a lot of other technologies outside of Drupal, but we're uh, probably best known for being the number two all-time contributor to Drupal. Uh, we have uh, more core committers, uh, sorry, core committers, core framework managers, subsystem maintainers, than any other organization. Uh, and I should note that we're uh, one of two uh, providers currently offering Drupal 6 long-term support, and we've been approved to provide Drupal 7 extended support. So we're gonna give you some deep insight today into how things have worked and how things are going to work. Um, in addition, we are a platinum sponsor of DrupalCon. Uh, we are a supporting partner of the Drupal Association, and we donate a full-time resource to uh, the Drupal Association to help maintain and run the project's infrastructure, tooling, uh, all the websites, uh, everything that enables people to uh, develop Drupal. Uh, and I wanna make a, a plea here. If you guys uh, make a living, uh, a profit in whole or in part by uh, your association with Drupal, uh, please uh, donate to the Drupal Association and help support the Drupal project so it can continue to thrive. So let's talk about what we're going to cover today. Uh, we're going to talk about what Drupal end of life means, uh, when it's going to happen, and how things differ between Drupal 7 and 8, uh, why widely used versions of Drupal are being retired, uh, what the practical implications are uh, of all this on you and your organization and sites and your options, um, what Drupal vendor extended support is and uh, how it's going to work, why uh, it only covers Drupal 7 and not 8, and uh, we're going to answer your questions at the end. Uh, please uh, put them into the chat. Uh, we'll collect them as we go, and uh, we'll answer them uh, and other questions that come up at the end of the talk. So let's hop into things. Uh, what is uh, Drupal End of Life is a great place to start. Very understanding of what it takes to create and support a version of Drupal Core itself. Um, there are formal roadmaps and releases that people come together, define and agree upon. There are strict guidelines that have been developed and processes that define uh, how Drupal development is done. And these policies are enforced by uh, both people and technology. On the technology front, there is in-depth automated quality assurance testing. Um, to give you a sense of like the insane scale of that, um, the Drupal automated QA system does over 90,000 hours of testing in a single year. That's the equivalent of 10 years of work in parallel every single year. Um, and it really is uh, a big part of uh, the acceleration and development of Drupal and enterprise adoption of Drupal. Um, and it's expensive to run at 90,000 hours, and it takes people to run and maintain it, um, just as uh, development does. Uh, it's overseen by core committers, core framework managers, subsystem maintainers, et cetera. Um, and um, all of this is to say that it, it, you know, it really takes a lot of time, money, people, and resources to make this happen. 
And the majority of people that are uh, contributing to Drupal are individuals that are doing so uh, on their personal free time. Uh, and even the few lucky ones that are paid to do this only have so many hours in a day. So let's talk about end of life. Um, simply put, uh, all the things that I talked about just now are uh, going away. Uh, it means the Drupal community is no longer going to support and work on or you know, provide anything for uh, Drupal 7 and 8. Core development is going to stop entirely. Uh, in fact, the issue queues uh, where Drupal 8 and 7 development happens are going to be locked. So you're not going to be able to post any changes to uh, Drupal core moving forward, at least not on, on Drupal.org, the central repository for the platform. Um, I should note that uh, when, when Drupal 6 was uh, uh, end of life, uh, the Drupal 6 contrib was not locked and, and people are free to continue to develop on Drupal 6. And we expect the same to happen uh, for contrib with 7 and 8. But to set expectations, almost no development has happened in the 6 uh, contrib branch. And a lot of maintainers uh, close those branches because they don't want to be inundated with continued support requests. The tooling that I mentioned, you know, the issue queues are going to be locked. Uh, the testing infrastructure is most likely going to be de decommissioned uh, for 7 and 8, given the costs and the resourcing. But uh, there hasn't been a final formal decision on that. Uh, without a free shared community testing infrastructure, Drupal module development is going to be hampered. Uh, individuals can run the core test suite locally, uh, but without that community infrastructure, you know, most people don't have automated tooling in place. And so testing likely isn't going to be enforced. It's going to be less likely to happen as a result of that. And, you know, that's going to introduce uh, all sorts of problems. You know, I make a patch of Drupal core. I have a test for it. Um, you know, that's not part of the global suite. You make a test in, uh, for your change. That's not part of the suite. And so, you know, as more and more changes happen, even if two people, you know, do contribute tests, it's going to be harder to get access to them. Less testing is going to lead to buggy code, regressions of past problems, and so on. Complicating things further, uh, there's going to be uh, no security team participation in Drupal 7 and 8 moving forward. All of the security reviews and updates and announcements that happen for Drupal 7 and 8 uh, are going to stop. Um, any new vulnerabilities uh, that are found in current versions of Drupal, say 9 and 10, uh, there's a high likelihood that they're going to impact uh, Drupal 7 and 8. At least that's what we've seen with, with Drupal 6. And these are going to be known vulnerabilities. And there aren't going to be uh, official patches released by the Drupal security team. So your site's going to be open to known vulnerabilities. And it doesn't take an expert hacker to take advantage of that. There are tools out there. Uh, that fingerprint Drupal websites and automate attacks against known vulnerabilities. So if you don't continue to maintain versions of Drupal that are end of life, it really isn't a matter if you're going to get hacked so much as a matter of when. Lastly, uh, dependencies are an issue. Uh, Drupal 7 has a few dependencies uh, like PHP and uh, Drupal 8 has a lot, which we're going to talk about um, and this is a problem because, you know, the current version of Drupal of PHP that, that Drupal supports is also going to go end of life soon. And the community isn't going to be providing PHP security patches. And so it doesn't matter how secure you keep your Drupal up to date if other applications like PHP are insecure and out of date. And um, while it's possible and we have updated uh, Drupal to support newer versions or legacy versions of Drupal to support newer versions of PHP, it's non-trivial. Uh, and it's really out of the reach of most organizations. So when is all this going to happen? When are 7 and 8 uh, going to reach end of life? Uh, it's different for each. Uh, historically, policy uh, for Drupal uh, up to Drupal 7 was that we were going to maintain two major versions of Drupal at any one time. So Drupal 7 should have gone uh, EOL last month when Drupal 9 was released technically. But there was a stay of execution. It was extended to November 2021, uh, given the large user base for Drupal 7. And uh, given the cost of migrations, uh, the time it takes, uh, and the resource impact that COVID-19 has had on organizations, uh, it was recently announced that uh, EOL is going to be extended again to November 2022. 
So that's almost 2.5 years from today, hopefully giving you plenty of time to uh, manage and handle uh, your uh, path and approach forward. Things are different uh, for Drupal 8. Uh, as of Drupal 8, uh, we changed the policy for how uh, we support uh, legacy versions of Drupal. Uh, and this is because D8 was the first version of Drupal ever to uh, really be based on a large number of dependencies, things like uh, Symfony, Guzzle, Twig. Um, and uh, for example, Symfony uh, 3, which Drupal 8 is dependent upon, is going end of life and is going to stop receiving Drupal, uh, sorry, Symfony security patches in November 2021. That really makes it uh, extremely difficult for Drupal to be on Symphony 3 if there aren't going to be security patches. Uh, and we're, and we're going to talk about this more lately. And so um, historically, uh, Drupal 7 and Drupal 8, massive upgrade, uh, essentially uh, even different platforms. So, you know, in the past, uh, a major version change meant uh, a major evolution and leap and a lot of work to migrate. Um, that's no longer the case. Uh, Drupal 9 is essentially Drupal 8. Uh, it is uh, Drupal 8 with some code removed and, and a little bit added. But, you know, given that, uh, the upgrade path should be relatively easy. And we'll talk more about that, too. But, you know, given the dependencies and what we talked about uh, with their going end of life, Drupal 8 is uh, still going to go end of life in November 2021 as planned. So why are heavily used versions of Drupal being uh, EOL'd? Um, Drupal 7 is the most popular version of Drupal ever. There are probably more people using Drupal 7 than all of the other versions of Drupal combined. Um, so why would we cut it off? Why would we, we put an end to that? And, um, you know, Drupal uh, 7 is almost 10 years old now. By the time it goes end of life, it's going to be 12 years. Development started, you know, before the release. So by the time it goes end of life, it's going to be 15 years old. And people have been working on it for a really long time. I don't know how much technology you have on your laptop that's 15 years old. Probably nothing. Um, you know, that's a really impressive lifespan for technology. Um, you know, simply the, the Drupal community can't support. You know, we don't have the bandwidth to do Drupal 9 and 10 while also supporting 7 and 8. It, it isn't possible. Um, and, you know, uh, people aren't paying for uh, Drupal 7 and 8 support. You know, you're not paying for Drupal development, as we talked about. It's free software. Statistically, almost everybody here uh, isn't being paid to work on Drupal, isn't paying someone to work on Drupal, isn't financially supporting Drupal development in a substantial way. Um, and so, you know, that makes it challenging. Uh, the people that are being paid are are being paid to upgrade to Drupal 9 and, and work on the future of Drupal. So, you know, individuals just don't have the interest in working on a legacy platform that's 10 plus years old. You know, if you're a core contributor, you're a, a really great developer and you need to keep your skills sharp and you're going to work on modern technology. And so that's where your focus is, not on, on Drupal 7. Um, and frankly, it's it's really what's best for 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 Drupal, even if it isn't you know best for individual users of legacy platforms. You know, Drupal has grown over twenty years because it continually innovates and and launches new releases. And if we want Drupal to be around for another twenty years, the community needs to be focused on the future and the evolution of Drupal. The situation for Drupal 8 going end of life is uh, entirely different. As I mentioned, Drupal 8 uh, introduced a lot of dependencies. Um, you know, there was a philosophical shift in, in Drupal development with 8. Uh, historically, uh, we did a lot of uh, things ourselves, if not everything ourselves. And so uh, the goal was to get off our largely self-contained island that is Drupal. And we did so by integrating these other systems. And some of the whole is greater than the parts. You know, it's really awesome that we did this. A lot of great functionality was added. Um, but these dependencies are going end of life, as I mentioned. And, you know, forking and supporting these new versions is challenging. So really what, you know, the best approach is to upgrade Drupal to support new versions, to go from Symphony 3 to Symphony 4. Uh, another thing that changed when uh, Drupal 8 development happened is our versioning, how we, uh, you know, do 8.1 versus 8.2 when Drupal 8 becomes Drupal 9. 
we adopted a system called semantic versioning, uh, and it's just a, a set of rules and, and policies for how you do that number changes. Um, and one of the rules is that when you make uh, core API changes, uh, you have to release a new version, a new major version. And upgrading dependencies like Symphony 3 to Symphony 4 is very likely to involve those core API changes, uh, and hence Drupal 8 becomes uh, Drupal 9. So, you know, it's um, you know, it's an entirely different world. You know, what is a major release uh, isn't what it used to be. Uh, and if you've been keeping up with things in particular, it should be uh, pretty easy. Really, nine is eight. So what are your options? You know, uh, what are you going to do with the fact that Drupal 7 and 8 are going end of life? Let's talk about each of the, uh, them independently. Uh, you know, with Drupal 7, there are many different options that are available to you. Uh, and you have that two and a half years. There are some high cost and low cost options. Uh, the obvious thing is you could do absolutely nothing. And I'm really shocked at the number of organizations that opt for this approach. But I, I beg of you. Uh, really do not do this. Um, it's a really bad idea for all of the reasons that I mentioned. You know, the costs and risks of doing nothing are extremely high. Um, so don't really consider that. Please um, choose one of the other options. You, you can migrate to Drupal 9. You could migrate to another CMS platform or framework. Uh, you know, the effort to migrate is substantial regardless of the way that you're going to go. So if you do choose these options, you got to be thinking about, you know, training your teams on new technologies, potential new resources. Um, so it does take planning, not just from a technology standpoint, but from an organizational shift and resourcing standpoint. There are low cost options as well, which I'm sure many are going to be considering. Uh, an obvious one, you know, kill the website, just shut it down. You know, maybe you really don't need to run it anymore. You can end of life it. Um, it is an option. Uh, maybe not an option many want to consider, but I'll throw it out there. Uh, you could also do something like uh, crawl the site and make it static and archive it and, and make the static version available. You can, um, you know, so there, there are options that are better than shutting it down and keeping it available. Probably uh, the best option and what we're going to be talking about uh, today is purchasing uh, or leveraging uh, what has been made available for Drupal 7 extended support, D7ES. Uh, extended support is not a new thing. It was originally launched uh, as part of Drupal 6 when it went end of life, and it, uh, it's called Drupal 6 uh, LTS, long-term support. Um, it was first introduced in uh, 2016, and um, so it's been around for a long time. Uh, two companies are uh, currently approved and providing uh, Drupal 6 long-term support. Wizard uh, Tag One. We offer a product called Tag One Quo, which is a SaaS product and set of services that enable you to uh, run and uh, use Drupal 6. Uh, so we've proven this model. We have many years of experience uh, providing long term support. Uh, and so we're in a great, good place as a community to offer it for Drupal 7. Uh, and it's also been a huge success. Uh, there are a lot of organizations that are still, tens of thousands of organizations that are still running Drupal 6 and benefiting from our uh, long-term support. We have, you know, many customers. We still have customers signing up for Drupal 6 long-term support. Uh, it, it's been so popular. Originally, uh, Drupal 6 LTS was promised for a year, and then it was extended three years to uh, February 2020, earlier this year. But given the continued demand for it, um, both my drop wizard and tag one have committed to providing support indefinitely, you know, for at least another two years with no end date in sight. Uh, and really what it comes down to is if there's enough commercial demand for long term support uh, and it's technically feasible to to operate it, uh, it's going to be provided. So this is all great sticking on Drupal seven and, and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, in a minute. So uh, what is uh, Drupal extended support? Um, basically, uh, the core uh, option, there's a core option that everyone must provide and then services that, that vendors can provide on top of that. And I'll get to that in a second. But uh, the, the core of Drupal 7 vendor extended support is security. And the vendors that are approved uh, must provide a minimum set of services uh, if they're going to participate in the program. You know, first and foremost, 
Uh, they need to provide tested security patches. If there is a security update needed for Drupal 7, like a bug is found in 9, that it needs to be backported or uh, an end user reports a bug, uh, you know, extended support vendors are going to fix that. Uh, the same is true with specific contributed modules. Uh, there hasn't been a list identified as of yet, but there will be a list identified uh, before the EOL date. Uh, I would assume it's going to be, uh, you know, a, a small list of the most popular contributed Drupal modules. It, it's not going to be extensive as part of the the core problem, uh, the core offering. Um, and I should note that, you know, while uh, you know, the security team and, and vendors uh, address security problems. They're typically not proactively scanning, uh, you know, especially uh, legacy versions of Drupal. So it's based on what's reported uh, and what we discover, but we're not, you know, scouring through the code on your behalf as part of this core offering. Um, vendors must also provide to uh, commit to providing Drupal 7 extended support for at least three years to give you guys uh, confidence that that it's going to be around and is worthwhile and in investing. Um, and a, a really exciting thing is that if you're an extended support vendor, you have to commit to releasing any and all of your patches as open source. And this isn't limited to the core offering. If a customer comes to tag one with a development request or a bug fix on a contributed module that's outside of that specific list, develop a, a fix or add that feature, we're obligated to release that to open source. So I think that's that's a really awesome commitment that organizations are making that'll benefit uh, users of, uh, of Drupal 7 during long-term support. So if all of these patches and updates are going to be made uh, available open source for free, you're probably thinking, why on earth would I pay for extended support? Um, you know, and, and the reality is, you know, you don't have to pay for extended support, just like you don't have to pay for Drupal. You can monitor the uh, the vendor updates. They have to be uh, posted to the uh, Drupal 7 extended support issue queue on Drupal.org. And, um, you know, vendors will also have a public repository that they maintain, and that'll be linked to from the extended support vendor pages. Um, so you have access to all of these patches, and you can monitor the situation and update your sites yourself. I would implore you, uh, you know, supporting vendors, and there are inexpensive options to do so, is important. If support, you know, if Drupal seven extend vendors, you know, aren't going to support it. Initially, there were three vendors approved to support Drupal six. Uh, it really wasn't commercially viable for one of the organizations, a really large organization. It didn't represent, you know, you know, millions of dollars in revenue for them. And so it wasn't really viable for them to run uh, and operate it. And so they dropped out of the program. And you should expect that if people don't support Drupal 7 extended support, that that's going to happen too. Um, you know, the other thing is that vendors, and we're going to talk about this next, are going to offer enhanced services that you're going to need or want. It's up to us to provide incentives and compelling value to uh, get you to, to, to purchase and support extended support. We're not looking for your goodwill, though. It would be nice to have. We're going to make it worth your while. So what are the kinds of things that you can expect from uh, vendors that are going to be providing uh, Drupal 7 extended support beyond that minimum list that we uh, just went through? One of the biggest benefits is, you know, they're going to have tools that monitor your sites, alert you to updates. They're going to help you apply patches. They'll even apply the patches for you if you want. And so, you know, th there can be a full service model here. Um, just like now, we're going to continue to offer Drupal 7 services, enhancements to core and contrib, help you with your code. And this is going to become more and more important as time goes on. If you think about Drupal 6, uh, there aren't, you know, many developers in the world that are, you know, meaningfully, uh, you know, or in any way involved in Drupal 6. So if you need help with that, you really are dependent upon uh, an extended support vendor. There just aren't the developers out there to provide that support. So again, another really important reason, if you need help down the line, you're going to want it available. Of course, we'll help you with your uh, proprietary stuff. And, and this comes into play, particularly when, say, we upgrade Drupal to support uh, a new version of PHP. There are changes that are going to need to happen to contrib modules to your proprietary code. Um, and it really helps to have a Drupal expert involved in that process. So you can turn to a vendor for that. 
sometimes hosting companies will uh, no longer support a legacy version of Drupal. We've seen this happen, uh, and companies have to come to us for help migrating to a host that does support it. And so another great reason that, that you can uh, turn to us. Um, and, um, you know, I think that, um, you know, uh, we talked about this already, you know, upgrading to, to Drupal to support new PHP versions. Um, and on top of all this, vendors are going to provide a compelling set of tools and capabilities that are going to help you. Uh, for example, Tag One Quo offers a, a rich interactive dashboard. So if you have more than one Drupal site or if you have lots of Drupal sites, as many enterprises do, it gives you tremendous insight and management capabilities to, to manage your, you know, and, and see what sites are up to date, what aren't, where you need to put work. Uh, and so organizations are going to provide uh, capabilities that are going to be really helpful to you to so continue to operate your systems. Uh, and it really just comes down to basic economics, right? If, if uh, there are demands for services, uh, you know, and enough money behind it, you're going to find vendors that are going to want to support it. So you should be in a good place. Um, how do you, uh, you know, trust and, and know that your Drupal 7 uh, extended support vendor is qualified to do this, that your site's going to remain secure is a really important thing. Um, official vendors are going to be uh, vetted. There's an application process. The Drupal security team, the Drupal association goes through these organizations and approves only a, a limited set. Uh, this uh, approved list will be publicly posted uh, sometime before the EOL date. Uh, it has not been uh, listed yet who is approved. Uh, and there are, uh, you know, a lot of qualifications that organizations need to have uh, in order to uh, provide this, as well as a commitment to the community that, that are going to need to 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 happen. Uh, first and foremost, your organization has to have team members, at least one person that's meaningfully engaged in the Drupal security team, and that person is going to be reviewed by the Drupal security team, and, and they're going to ensure that they are a meaningful uh, member that's doing great work for the security team. Um, so, you know, you can be assured that they are security experts. Uh, it's also critical that they're participating in Drupal Core, so there has to be a public demonstration issue queue work on Drupal Core, contributed modules. You know, you're simply not in a position to provide extended support for a platform if you aren't meaningfully engaged in the development of that platform. That's a critical thing that you need to have in a, in a Drupal 7 extended support vendor. Um, and uh, uh, you have to honor your commitment. You know, you're making a commitment to do this for three years. You know, if you aren't contributing to, you know, building out these patches, you're going to get kicked out of the program. So vendors are expected to contribute to the patches so that no one company uh, uh, establishes, you know, or takes on the burden of doing this. It's important to have a lot of eyes on the code to make sure that, that you know, uh, we're, we're not introducing problems and that we're doing a great job here. Um, and it's important to have a competitive marketplace. You know, we want you to have options and be able to pick the best vendor for you. So we've talked about when it's going to happen, uh, you know, what it is, uh, how does it work in practice is, is a really important thing. You know, what is it that you can expect? Uh, you know, how is it going to operate? How are you going to implement this from a practical standpoint? Um, so, you know, there's that core offering, and, and I can really speak meaningfully to that because that's the minimum that uh, that organizations can provide. Uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, other services, but primarily, um, you know, when a Drupal version goes end of life, uh, you know, where are you going to get your patches uh, if the issue queues are locked down? You know, for a, a version of Drupal that's under active development, like Drupal 9, you go to Drupal.org, you go to the issue queues, you know, you that's where you download Drupal. There's a central, you know, formal repository. Um, with uh, long-term, with, with extended support, uh, you know, vendors are obligated to commit their their modules and their their patches to the uh, extended support issue queue on Drupal.org. That's a running conversation, and it can be a little hard to follow. Um, you know, they have their repositories that are public, and that's probably the best place to look because it's going to be well organized. And uh, and again, if you're participating in their services, they're going to provide you with alerts. And so, you know, vendors are going to have their own public repos. Um, Another important thing to note is that vendors can have their own uh, conventions for, you know, numbering and naming. Drupal uh, 7 and 8, like we talked about, have formal policies as to how they version, you know, what's the difference between 8.1 and 8.2 or 
2.1 and 8.3, uh, you know, what makes 8 versus 9, um, that all goes out the window with uh, extended support. Vendors can, you know, invent their own naming conventions. You know, if the last version of Drupal before end of life is 7.75, you know, they can do 7.75.1.2. They can do 7.76. You know, they, they can literally do whatever they want. And, um, you know, that means that, um, you know, uh, if one vendor is on 7.9 and another is on, you know, 7.10.3, uh, there's there's no comparison. It's just a number at this point. You know, the the higher number version doesn't by any means uh, indicate that it is uh, you know up to date versus the the lower version number. So you know, keep that in mind. Uh, the other important thing to note is you know because of all of these things that we just talked about, vendor updates are not compatible. You know, what one organization includes in their patches may not be. You know what others are can you know like what let's say we are supporting contributed modules that another vendor isn't and we release a patch for that you know that's not going to be part of of their updates and releases and so different numbers different contents in these things um, means that they're generally not compatible with each other uh, but you can switch you can switch from one patch set to another and one vendor to another uh, but it requires some lifting as a pain in the ass so you know it's a good idea to uh, you know vet your vendors and pick a great one uh, and also i think we've covered this vendors can choose how they deliver updates you know automatic notifications pull requests emails etc um you know it you know how they handle this program is up to them and so uh th you know there are some rules that i'm going to cover shortly uh but there's also no formal release schedule outside of security releases so if you're doing module patches uh enhancements it's up to you when and how you release them as a vendor. There's no schedule. Um, there's going to be no community announcements, right? When a, when a Drupal 9 version has a critical security vulnerability, you're going to be alerted uh, as, as you know, part of the security team, you know, services. And, and that's not going to happen anymore. And so, you know, it's up to you to either, you know, keep an eye on these things and, and monitor the issue uh, queue for extended support or work with the vendor to make sure that they're notifying you uh, and you have to be on the last release of Drupal 7 before end of life to apply any of the uh, extended support patches. So if the last version is 7.77, uh, if you're not on 7.77, you're not going to be able to apply any of the vendor patches. They assume that you're on that version. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is upgrade to that um, you know, um, I assume that you guys are all keeping your sites up to date, so that, that's not going to be a problem for anybody, right? So let's talk about uh, Drupal 7 security policies. Uh, it has to follow the same security policies as uh, any version of Drupal, and this is really important. Security team members are not allowed to communicate or discuss uh, known vulnerabilities that are under development being fixed prior to release. Uh, violating that will result in your termination from the Drupal security team. If you're a Drupal 7 uh, extended support vendor, you're probably going to get kicked out of the program. Um, you know, uh, as I said, a, a hole in Drupal 7 could impact 9 and vice versa. It's important that the security team has the opportunity to work on these things uh, and release them so that we can ensure the community as a whole is protected. Um, Another thing, you know, even though Drupal 7 extended support vendors are involved in the security team and, and creating these fixes, we can't release any updates to you until the official security release happens. So, um, you know, we're well poised because we're involved in the process. We're, you know, we're ready to pounce as soon as they are interleased and ensure that you're updated very quickly. Uh, but you will not receive uh, any advance notification or uh, patches. Uh, you're going to get them at the same time as everybody else in the community. Uh, and uh, lastly, um, you know, uh, extended releases uh, and security patches, you know, like I said, they're going to come out uh, either at the same time as the official release or shortly thereafter. So if there's a bug in 9 that impacts 7, uh, we're going to try and release the 7 patch at the same time or slightly thereafter. And to date with Drupal 6, we've done a great job of maintaining that. So, you know, you're, you're in a good position to uh, remain secure. You know, this comes up, uh, so I figured I'd, I'd hit it up again. You know, uh, you know, really, you know, is there really not going to be uh, Drupal 8 uh, vendor extended support? Uh, the reality is that 
you know, for any number of reasons, not everyone's going to upgrade from Drupal 8 to Drupal 9. And that's a problem. So, so what can you do? Uh, and I want to reiterate, you know, I want to beat this home. There is no officially sanctioned or approved Drupal 8 extended support. Um, that said, nothing stops any vendor from offering extended support. Uh, it just isn't official. You know, think back to what we talked about around security concerns. Um, you know, it's challenging to offer that. So be weary of a vendor that's offering you extended support that hasn't been vetted. Uh, and think back to all those dependencies, right? If, if Symphony 3, uh, you know, if Drupal 7 has to be uh, upgraded to a new version of PHP, if 8 has to go from Symphony 3 to Symphony 4, you have to fork Symphony, sorry, if you want to keep Symphony 3 running with, with Drupal 8, you've got to fork it. You've got to maintain security patches and updates. So if you're not an expert in Guzzle, in Symphony, in Twig, in all of these dependencies, you're not positioned to offer uh, support for it because you can't maintain and keep it secure. And I highly doubt that there are a lot of vendors out there that are experts in all of these systems from a security and core development standpoint. So, you know, it's it's possible that, uh, you know, vendors could offer a, you know, there are scenarios maybe, uh, you know, Symphony will have a vendor that's providing uh, extended support much like Drupal does. And there could be a partnership that could make it feasible. Um, but it, it's unlikely. Uh, you know, you, you really... Uh, can't and shouldn't plan on this happening. You should be investing in upgrading to Drupal 9. Uh, you have over a year to make that happen. Um, you know, please do not plan on, hope on, or, you know, assume that there's going to be an eight extended support program. It's, it's really unlikely to happen. So focus on getting on 9. So let's wrap up and then get to your questions. Um, you know, Drupal 7 is an awesome platform. It really is going to continue to meet the needs of many organizations for a long time. Migrations are costly and cost prohibitive. Um, it may make a lot of sense for your organization to stay on Drupal 7. Um, if uh, 7 is anything like 6, and this is my personal guesstimate, you're going to see hundreds of thousands of sites that are going to be on Drupal 7 after the end of life date. Uh, and this means that there's going to be a, a strong, vibrant, and robust community, uh, an economy of both, uh, you know, users and vendors providing support, which puts you in a great position. So, you know, you're going to be able to run Drupal 7 for five to seven years after end of life. Uh, you know, you are not being forced to upgrade your Drupal 7 site if you don't want to and it meets your needs as an organization. This should be a business decision that you make as an organization is it right for me? Do I need to, for whatever reason, upgrade from seven? Great, do it. If it continues to meet your needs, awesome. Stay on it. It will meet your needs for a long time, we hope. Um, and, you know, really don't let uh, Drupal 8 end of life scare you. You know, Drupal 9 really is uh, Drupal 8. Uh, you know, it, there's some deprecated code, a few features. If you've been keeping up with it, uh, you know, doing these minor releases, Upgrading to Drupal 9 should be really easy, and the same is going to be uh, true of Drupal 10. Uh, Drupal 10 was, I don't know if you guys saw this, but just yesterday, Dries announced that Drupal 10 is going to be released in June 2022, which is, uh, you know, two years away. And so moving forward, you're going to see much more frequent and faster releases of Drupal because of that semantic versioning change and keeping up with the dependencies. And moving forward, upgrading from 8 to 9, 9 to 10, it's going to be a much smoother, much easier process. So please keep up with the minor version releases, which is good on many fronts. You should be keeping your site up to date and secure. And if you do so, migrating from nine, 8 to 9, 9 to 10 really should be a relatively easy process. Awesome. Um, let's hop into questions with our remaining time. So there, there were a handful of questions, quite a few questions asked in your talk, lots of good feedback as well. Um, they were also generally answered as we went. So I'll reiterate them, but if you've been following along in chat, a lot of these answers you already saw. Um, so one question that was raised, uh, Stephen said, it seems like a lot of security updates in the D6 LTS were backported from D7. And that's relatively similar compared to D8. Um, and so, you know, how, how will D7 extended support discover security holes? Um, the, the entire purpose of this vendor program is to do exactly that. You know, once we're aware of a security issue, 
the question is, okay, does it affect an earlier version? And there's, you know, the last four and a half years has been spent doing that for Drupal 6 and similarly will happen for, for Drupal 7 extended support. Um, we have backported uh, fixes from D8 to D6 already. Um, so it's absolutely possible. Um, Pooja had asked whether or not uh, you have to be associated with a singular uh, vendor. Um, you do not have to. Um, the patches are all open source um, and individual vendors will maintain their patches publicly. You can switch. It's just that it can add complexity because of how things are versioned. Um, it's, it's something to be aware of. With uh, the factors around pricing for extended support, what I can tell you is that our product quo starts at $150 a month for Drupal 6. And it will be no more than that. Um, we're looking at ways to bring the price down even more. Um, and with every vendor that's out there, they're going to publish their own pricing. So certainly there's going to be uh, other, other pricing options out there. Um, Dory mentioned that this seems like a, a black eye for the open source module, the open source model, excuse me. Um, if, if you look back at the slides that Michael presented, he did a good job of explaining why after 12 years, um, it's it's difficult for community to support a very, very old release of code. Um, I think it's the converse of what you're saying. This is actually fantastic that it's possible to stay on something after 12 years for yet another five plus years um, and have the support you need and guaranteed that even if you don't pay for it, it's going to still be there for you as open source. So it's to me, it's quite impressive. Um, Let's see. There were some new questions that came in. Uh, Michael, can you summarize what else has come in? Sure. Uh, Duncan asked, um, oh, sorry. Um, currently, there are 672,000 sites running with Drupal 7, uh, which is 70% more than 8 and 9. Of course, I don't know, statistics are really hard to come by, but we'll run with that. Uh, in your opinion, uh, stopping support for this version can be a problem for Drupal uh, as a secure framework. I think you just covered that. Um, we're not stopping support for that. We're continuing to offer support for it for another five to seven years. So I don't think that's a problem. Uh, Anthony asked, uh, will it be possible to migrate from uh, Drupal 8 to Drupal 10 along with modules? What do you think, Jeremy? Um, yes, I, I, I think it's easier to go with each release though. Um, but yes, you could do that. The, 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 catch, the, the catch there is that every, Every D8 release, D8.1, D8.2, D8.3, as you go through those, you're getting, it's a bigger and bigger step to take. So if you can take the step more frequently, it's going to be easier for you than to take a, a larger step from D8 to D10, but it's, it's definitely possible and well documented. Cool. And the last question that I see uh, is from Steven, and he says, um, what do you recommend sites running D7ES do for contrib modules that aren't covered by extended support? So extended support, with, with D6, extended support does cover contrib and core. And I, I know at least for ourselves that our plan is to do exactly what we've done with Quo, which is to say that if any paying customer has a contrib module that has a security, that we find a, a security vulnerability for, um, we will provide a patch as long as they're using the latest release um, and there has been an actual official release. So these vendors will provide you with support for not just core, but also for contrib. We have a, another question coming in, and, and, and folks, please keep asking questions. We'll continue to answer uh, all of your questions uh, and stick around. Um, how does the contract work? Is it annual? Uh, and uh, I'll let you cover that, Jeremy, yeah, as Again, well. that's going to be dependent vendor by vendor. Um, Quo is a uh, month by month. There's no commitment whatsoever. And we'll even give you a free, free months, one or more months of support to try it out. Um, and I imagine that all vendors will be competitive with the same sort of concepts. So it's, there might be vendors that have larger contracts, annual contracts there. Um, to, to flip that around, we do have customers that want an annual contract and we're more than happy to sign annual or even, you know, two year contracts if that's necessary for your needs. And I should add that, you know, at least for us with the uh, the monthly contract, it's it's month to month. You can terminate any time. There's no commitment if you don't want to make it, um, you know, and I think other vendors are similar. Um, you know, we want to meet the needs of the community. We, we follow the open source ethos. Um, you know, uh, you shouldn't be locked in.
Awesome. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for uh, uh, for for hanging with us and, and 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 you know participating in this talk. If you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to Jeremy or I. Uh, we're happy to answer them and uh, and help you in any way. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time to participate in in this talk and uh, and DrupalCon Global. So thank you guys one all quick, uh, very much. Your question is that the vendors have not all been announced yet because it's still two and a half years away. Um, so that will be finalized over the next two and a half years. I don't see any other questions then. All right. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, guys.